Hi everybody, this is Jay for Simply Maya, and welcome to this week's free Friday tutorial. Um, this week we're going to be looking at the Use Background Shader. Um, it's a shader that enables you to incorporate 3D objects into 2D images, um, and also enable you to cast shadows across the 2D image from your objects, and then you can go into a compositing software or some photo imaging software like Photoshop, and put the elements together and come up with a half decent image. Um, so to get started, um, to give you a better idea, we're first going to create a camera and we're going to look through that camera. There we go, I'm just going to move it down a little bit, there we go. And then what we're going to do next is we're going to create an image plane. So I'm going to import an image that um, I've already got ready for you. Um, and some of you may have seen it already on the forum as I used it as an example for something very similar for the January challenge. Um, and also what I'm going to do, I'm just going to give myself a bit more room, so I'm just going to uh, turn on the uh, resolution gate for the camera itself. I'm just leaving this at default settings um, because we're just really looking at the um, about the background shader really at the moment. Um, okay, so what we're going to do, uh, we're gonna, now we're going to create our a ground plane uh, for our, we're going to put a car object in here and what I'm going to do is put, put in a ground, ground plane and for our car to sit on. And this is going to enable us to look like we're casting a shadow upon the grass. I know it's not a very um, sunny day, but um, it's just to give you an idea of how to use uh, the uh, shader uh, itself. So I'm going to create a polygon plane and I'm just going to move it into our view and I'm just going to scale it up a little bit as well. Okay, I'll we'll just move that back. So, as you can see, just need to do a little bit of line up there with our camera. So, I'm just going to lower it down just so the edge here is sort of in line with the base of these uh, small uh, garden bits and pieces. And then, what I'm going to do, it's not quite lined up with the with the background of the grass. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to rotate it ever so slightly just so it's a bit straighter there, like so. And then I'm just going to move that back a little bit more there so it's not too bad. Okay, so what we're going to do now, we're actually going to put our background shader on here. So I'm just going to go to my Layouts tab and that should bring up hopefully my render views and everything and also my Hypershade and in here we can click on our Use Background now if we just quickly clip into our camera view here, uh, if I press 5, you can see that our polyplane is still looking very grey, very dull. I'll just blow it up a bit more. But if we apply this, we know it's applied because it goes green. And if I do a quick render for you, let's just make sure we're in mental ray as well. So settings and preferences, plugin manager, quick scroll down, my to mental ray. Let's load it up, we can close that, that's great. So I can now go in to Mental Ray and actually what I'll do, I'll show you first without the shader. So if we do a quick render of camera one, so you can see there's our polyplane with its standard Lambert shader on. Now if we drag and drop the background shader, there you go, you can see it's it's almost like it's transparent if you like, but the polyplane is still there. It's that we just can't see it because the the shader is using the background to uh, shade the uh, polyplane as the same as it. So what we want to do now is we're going to bring a, an object in. So I'm going to import a small little Volkswagen Beetle that I've got. And that's my references. VW Beetle model. Now we're going to import that in. So I'm just going to move that back into our scene and let's make it a little bit more exciting. We'll just rotate it just a little bit more in here and I'll just lower it down. Like so. I think I'll just move it back a little bit. There we go. So if we do a quick render again. Let's just blow this up so you can see it. 
So there we go, there's our beetle. You can see that the, poly, the polyplane is still in there because it's cutting through through the tyres there uh, on the beetle itself. So what we'll do, we'll just higher that up a little bit. Okay, not too much. And let's just move it across as well, just to centre it up a bit more. There we go, so that's a bit better. So as you can see, it's still sitting on our grass, but it looks a bit dodgy because there's no shadows or anything like that. So what we're going to do, I'm going to add a light into the scene. So I'm just going to use a directional light for this exercise. And I'm just going to scale it up a little bit. Let's just bring that in. There we go. Okay. And I'm going to leave it on the default of 1. And I'm just going to turn the shadows on. Okay. Let me just graph that for this. Let's just open up these attributes. Okay, so what we're going to do now, we're going to pop another render. There we go. So now you can see that we're casting shadow. We're also casting a little bit of reflection there from the car. So what we're going to do, we're going to just turn that off uh, for now. The uh, specular and the reflectivity, these two do both affect each other. So the more you have of one affects the other and so on. So as you can see here, uh, shadow mask is at one. So that, that means we've got full shadow. Okay, like so. And you'll see you'll get a, your alpha channel and everything else and your shadow uh, cut out alpha as well in the scene and what you can do is you can adjust that shadow depending on how uh, what sort of opacity you're after I mean you can do this in Photoshop after if you wish um, but just to give you an idea there you go you see I've dropped the opacity of that and it also affects it also inside the um, inside the alpha channel as well so if we just go back to our view. Um, one thing I have noticed when when you do tend to use the user background, um, it actually renders the the photographic image that you use. It renders it out at less quality than if it was the actual original. So sort of take note of that because there is a slight loss in quality if you re-render that image within Maya. It's usually best to use it as the original image in you know whatever compositing or photographic. Uh, software that you choose to use to put it all together so just bear that in mind um, so also uh, a couple of other things before we uh, sort of close off um, you can actually hide this image uh, if you don't want to show uh, show this for your render within anything um, and what you can do is actually if we just go into our uh, cameras and we select that you can go to none if you select none and then render but you still get your channels and stuff like that so it's, it's useful to do this and it's the same with the car as well you know you can turn off its um, primary visibility or its render stats and again you know you may just want the shadow so you can use that you know just use the shadow channel only uh, over in Photoshop or whatever uh, software you're using to put it all together with. So that's pretty much it with this. Um, the other thing as well, you can you can blur your shadows obviously uh, within Photoshop. Uh, sorry, big pardon, within Maya. Um, I'll just quickly show you. So if we show these again, so RGBA for that, and we'll turn the car back on. And we'll just go back to our color element. And there you go. I've blurred the shadow ever so slightly. Let's just turn that on. There we go. And again, you can affect the opacity of how you want that as well. Okay. So again, if you just want the, the alpha for the shadow itself, just turn off the visibility and also select the camera and go to your image plane and select none and then you can just render out 
the shadow itself and then bring that over with the rest of the elements that you want to render out like the car and you can just put it all together and color your shadows and everything over in Photoshop so um, that's this week's Free Friday tutorial. It's Fast and Furious. Um, I hope I've explained myself as clearly as possible in the short amount of time that I've done it in. And uh, good luck with that. And I'll hopefully be along again soon with another tutorial. Cheers for now.